What's good, YouTube? We you know what it is. OTV Gale back in the cut. You know what's up? Back with another banger. Making the case, Larry Bird. Now, I finished the courtship of rivals basketball between Larry and Magic. Legendary video, legendary documentary. I appreciate the ones that suggested it. Um, I'm working on doing the 1992 documentary. So stay tuned for that. But right now, making the case, Larry Bird. Making the case as in Larry Bird is the GOAT of all time, like the greatest of all time, number one. Let's see. Oh, the special. The size of the court and the Talk lack of me. pads or helmets give Shit, fans no. the most intimate experience of a team sport that exists. Bro, imagine and Shaq jumping on styles that basketball allows for, players develop their own distinct identities and signature styles exactly. and creativity. <laughs> Flair. And athleticism. And although no player succeeds Rob alone, City, the I scoring remember. volume and two way nature of the sport give individual stars the beard, a nearly that falling off, amount no of control over the game. Damn, Tom. Come of a game. Huh. For this Should reason, players are constantly wicked out compared here. to their peers Paul. and the legends of the past in order to answer the most hotly contested question in the sport Who's the greatest to ever? Paul, we fresh off doing this Celtics, bro. That's a disgrace. The flow and outcome of a game. For this hey, reason, players are constantly compared to their peers and to the legends of the past in order to answer the most hotly contested question in the sport. Prom the D Rose. For many, the Filthy. question is redundant. They believe in only one right answer. Their answer. He do. Others might have their own personal stance, but acknowledge one or two alternatives. But I believe that there's much more nuance to the question of greatness and more answers to it than you might think. By my count, there are eight players in NBA history that have a substantial claim as the GOAT. It's a subjective thing, though. I can't give you a definitive answer. All I can do is make the argument. So, so today, I'll be making the case for Larry Bird as the greatest basketball player of all time. Greatest, I ain't heard this one, really. Besides on YouTube, listen, I didn't even really realize how huge Larry Bird was to the people until we did it on YouTube on OTV Bros. I said, wow, a lot of people love Larry Bird. So let me see. You know what I'm saying? You got to make the case to me. Now, I saw that nigga was nice. But greatest of all time, he definitely legendary. But, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to basketball, Larry Bird is the smartest, clutchest player to ever play the game. Okay. Now, if you don't think that Larry Bird is the greatest basketball player of all time, you probably hate that I just said that. Those are the kind of talking head sport cliches. See, me, personally, I agree. That nigga is smart. That nigga is one of the clutches. He ain't just smart. He is one of the smartest players to ever play. Like... Like, somebody said in the comments on one of the videos, they was like, he's not all, like, super flashy. Like, he's he's mom he's got moments where he's super technical and, like, he knows the game of basketball. That surely impact the game, but are impossible to empirically measure. Normally, I'd agree with you. But I think that when you talk about Larry Bird, you see those intangibles become real, palpable results. I wouldn't have said it if I didn't believe it. When Larry Bird was drafted by the Boston Celtics in 1978, the NBA needed saving. Attendance was in the toilet, the league had few marketable stars, cocaine addiction had several players in its grasp, and most damning of all, playoff games were being tape delayed. Playoff games at the highest level of basketball were being put in the back seat for black and white movies and network reruns. What? But rather than join the Celtics after being taken third overall, Larry Bird decided to return for his final year at Indiana State. So they chose to play the Wild Wild West before the NBA game? Like niggas was doing that? Put in the back seat for black and white movies and network reruns. But rather than join the Celtics after being taken third overall, Larry Bird decided to return for his final year at Indiana State. A decision that would prove to be one of the most important in the history of the sport. Bird's final year saw the Sycamores tear through college basketball, going 33-0 before the national championship game. He liked Bird, that. already claimed by the NBA's most historic and prestigious franchise, had established himself as the generational talent who would inherit the mantle of pro basketball. 
Indiana State's opponent in the national championship was Michigan, Michigan State, State, captained by the immortal Irvin Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson. The Sycamores lost the championship to the more talented Spartans in the highest rated game in the history of basketball at any level still to this day. The stage had been set. The next decade of basketball would be defined by the rivalry between the white hick from French Lick and his Boston Celtics and the black magic and his Showtime Lakers. See, when you add all that into Larry's argument, that shit, like, it just make you just want to drop the whole discussion because it's too much to get into, bro. Larry changed the game in a whole fucking different way. Like, he changed, not only did he change that shit in basketball, like, he was, like, even though he went out there trying to be flashy and shit, bro, that nigga had flashy plays. That nigga could be flashy if he wanted to. He was everything. Everything you ever needed in a player he had. But he also changed the game in a way that was bigger than basketball. Black and white. You know what I'm saying? Because they was painted as... The other was their villain for so long. And then that, you know how it ended in the courtship? You know what I'm saying? With the, with HIV and magic. Like, that's when you really saw how much they really meant to each other. And it was like, bro, it, that shit was so, this shit bigger than basketball, bro. This nigga, yeah. We three minutes in and I'm already sold really by some shit I just already knew. And is worthy of a hundred dollars. I just seen shit, I already knew it. In this video though, we're gonna be looking at Not this shit, but like I'm saying I knew the shit about Larry and Magic. Bird's basketball resume. His three championships come with perhaps the highest collective degree of difficulty of any player's championships. His three MVPs came consecutively, making him only the third player to accomplish the feat, along with Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain. His two finals MVPs are misleading. He was absolutely the best player on the 81 Celtics, but he was only a sophomore and his 15 points per game in the finals gave the media an excuse to exact a little vengeance on a legendarily difficult interview. His all-star and first team selections also come with the caveat that Bird only played for 13 seasons and missed all but six games of the 89 season following surgeries on both feet. I can hear you already. A 13 year career and this guy is supposed to be the GOAT? What color of paint are you huffing, Clayton? Green, obviously. But hear me out. Yeah, Bird's career. I just wrote down Larry Bird's stats. I mean, not stats, but his, like, accolades. You feel me? So, I'm going to compare these with all the other ones. Making the case, LeBron James, because that's my era. And if you ask me, that's my GOAT. LeBron James is my GOAT, fam. But I fuck with Larry, like, like, Larry liked that, bro. I gotta keep watching, though. It lasted about two-thirds as long as it should have. But what he did in that time was so impressive and so substantial that every basketball fan acknowledges that he's in the conversation as the greatest ever. Doesn't it matter that those 13 years saved professional basketball, delivered a disproportionate amount of memorable moments? Bro, and if you haven't noticed already, bro, oh, shit, something just fell in my eye. I've been rubbing my nose like shit, even since the last video. And when I say the weather changing like a motherfucker around here, bro, my nose stay running, bro. So I'm just trying to clean myself up as I go and shit, bro. Defined the golden age of the I'm not on that shit, bro. career by which all other forwards, before or since, are measured, Bird squeezed every drop of talent out in those 13 years and made it seem more like 30. He didn't just leave his fingerprints on the game. He left you can't so coach much that. of his DNA what? in the sport you can't coach that, that. a cigarette that. afterwards. There's something to be said uh. about the candle that lasts half as long but burns twice as bright. Those three MVP years stack up with any other run by any other player. I will put an A-plus Larry Bird season up against anyone's. Bro, what does an different. A-plus Larry Bird season look like? A full box score, a blowout win, a nearly undefeated record at home in a play style that could only be described one way, white. Larry Bird isn't just a white basketball player, he's the white basketball player. To describe Larry Bird's game is to thumb through the hoops dictionary and pick out every like, why we gotta white paint player. that picture? Though, Unathletic, like he's the great white shooter, player. good fundamentals, the whole thing. The archetype of a white basketball player is Larry Bird, with one exception. He had an unparalleled understanding of the game of basketball, both as a physical con. They should have used Larry for a uh, white man can't jump. They should have used Larry for that. 
test and as a it's still a great movie though but that shit is like IQ for that. infected every hell they could use magic pulled his career into legend shit. bird was a complete player jerry west called complete. him as perfect as you that's what i'm saying he could do everything first he great marksman he could contort his body to shoot from anywhere on the court regardless of the level of defense Wow. He pioneered the art of the Dagger Three and was the founding member of the 50-40-90 club. At six foot nine, Bird's understanding of angles and coordination led to a higher <clears throat> rebounding average than Patrick Ewing, and it made him an impressively adept finisher in his younger years. 86, Bird dropped 47 points on the Blazers, playing the majority of the game left-handed. His lack of quick lateral movement meant that Bird didn't do much when it came to slapping the floor and picking up the opposing point guard, but his size and omniscience gave him the ability to body similarly sized players, read defenses like a free safety, and pick off passing lanes with ease. His passing was transcendent, and I'll highlight it later. And of course you need to know that Larry Bird was a tough M effort. He had a superhuman motor and dove for loose balls like a beagle at the park. He was a willing participant a in tissue fights, often precipitated by his league-renowned trash talk. I was guarding in my rookie year. He looked at me and he goes, you can't stop me. And I looked at him and I said, gosh, boy, you're, you're so confident. He proceeded to score like 10 straight points off it. Coach took me out the game. He walks by and he's laughing at me. <laughs> he was a basketball genius. He'd be a step ahead, uh, a thought ahead, uh, play the game like a chess game. I'd much rather guard Michael Jordan than Larry Bird because you have to play the game as a thinker when you're playing him. You have to get inside his mind. He put all of us in a room, you know, Magic, Jordan, myself, and Bird. Bird probably be the guy who walks out of the room at the end of the day. Did you notice something during those testimonies? They said bird a beast, a killer. Those are some of the best basketball players of all time. And they all sing Bird's praises like they were former assassins who had to go toe to toe with John Wick and they're just happy to be alive. We seeing something bird that these people during one of the most talent rich. I mean, they seeing the something history. that we can't see. The bridge like the players that play with right goes bro. like this. Dr. It, bro. J and Moses Malone they on the Philadelphia seventy sixers, Sidney Moncrief on the Milwaukee Bucks. Isaiah Thomas, Bill Lambeer, and the Bad Boy Pistons. That's my brother. Dominique Wilkins scene. on the Atlanta Hawks. Bernard King on the New York Knicks. Michael Jordan on the Chicago Bulls. Hakeem Olajuwon and Ralph Sampson on the Houston Rockets. Yeah, yeah. And of course, Magic Johnson, James Worthy, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on the Los Angeles Lakers. All right, there's no point avoiding it any longer. We have to look at Magic versus Larry. If you have magic over Larry, it's because he has five rings to Larry's three, had a peak that lasted about two or three years longer than Larry's, and had a two-in-one record against Bird Celtics in the finals. Perfectly yeah. legitimate, completely respectable arguments. Right. But in the interest of making Bird's case, allow me to retort. For nearly the entire decade of the 1980s, the Eastern Conference was irrefutably the more competitive conference between the two. Considering the competition, for Bird to have made five finals appearances is just as impressive as Magic's nine. As for the head-to-head -head record responsible for Magic's two extra titles, he had more help. Seriously, the Celtics' big three and the Lakers' big three get compared all the time historically as if they were of equal caliber, but weren't Magic's accomplices just a step above Bird's? No disrespect at all to Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish, but Kareem I mean, was the alpha dog on the 71 yeah, bucks. I ain't gonna lie. You can't you can't compare the Boston Big Three. Who even said that? That shit is Larry Bird. And he has some help. He had a little bit of help. Then you got Big Three over here. Magic. Kareem. James. Like what? And was the best player for at least two of the Lakers five titles. Bro. Kareem was a whole ass bucket. James Worthy was the number one pick out of UNC after winning a championship as the best player on a team that Kareem was better than Parrish and was better than McDermott or whatever his name by Pat is. Riley, one of the most brilliant minds in basketball history, and you could James say Worthy that the Magic too. Bird argument comes down to one thing, luck. So if their careers come down to luck, the question just becomes who you would rather take. Now, I'm not making this video to tell you why you shouldn't take Magic. I'm making this video to tell you why you should take Bird. Not just over Magic, but over everybody. 
One thing that helps him is the fact that his play would translate perfectly into the league today. A six foot nine sharp shooting forward with eyes yeah. in the back of his head who averaged double digit rebounds in an era against Moses and Lambeer. He'd gobble up boards as a power forward. Yeah. He'd be an offensive mismatch against everybody as a small ball center. And his off ball skills and passing would pair perfectly with the flow of today's game. Add Facts. in his competitive mania and three generations worth of medical advancements, and we're talking about a player who could have stuck around so long they would have had to rename the league. As you've been watching these clips of Bird, I would hope that you would notice something. He always knows where everybody is. Watching Bird exactly. play basketball is like watching those monsters from a quiet place that know where you are if you make any noise at all. Bird had a level of clairvoyance that bordered on the unnatural. He got an In 85, he ended up one really steal like. away from a quadruple double after different. playing just the first three quarters. His passing was famously infectious and helped transform the Celtics of the 80s into an ideal. Larry know how to involve everybody on the floor. He made everybody better. Paper. They like. moved the ball with precision and intent, always looking for better shots and determined to get the entire team involved in the effort. That fact is almost entirely attributable to Bird and his wizardry with the ball. This acumen also helped Bird become the only player with a GOAT claim to transition successfully into other basketball roles after his playing career. In his three years as the head coach of the Pacers, Bird won a Coach of the Year award, coached the Pacers to their first and only finals of- Bro, I did not know he coached the Pacers. I really did. Successfully into other basketball roles after his playing career. In his three years as the head coach of the Pacers, Bird won a Coach of the Year award, coached the Pacers to their first and only finals appearance, and gave Michael Jordan Bang. as much trouble as he'd ever gotten in his career in the 98 Eastern Conference Finals. After moving into a front office role for Indiana, he won Executive of the Year in 2012, becoming the only person to have an MVP, Coach of the Year, and Executive of the Year award. On the court or off of it, inside and out, Larry Bird sees basketball as only he can. That intelligence also lent itself to Bird's defining skill, making the big plays. Remember, NBA players get paid to win games. James Harden is getting paid nearly $40 million this year because he's supposed to help the Rockets win games. Victory can be achieved in a lot of ways, and the win column doesn't care how it happens. As Mark Sinclair once said, It don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. But when your team is down one in a crucial playoff game with eight seconds left and you need to hit a shot to stay in the series and keep your season alive, Bang. that's where players really separate themselves and earn their money. Love it or hate it, it's the players that come through in the big moments that live forever in our memories. Some players, for whatever reason, were never able to do it consistently. Some players were truly outstanding at it. Larry Bird was the best at it. I remember one of the videos, I said, how many last second shots does this man have? How many buzzer beaters does Larry got? And they just said that nigga the king of that. Consistently. Some players were really truly outstanding at it. Damn, don't. Larry Bird was the best at it. He going crazy. Oh I'm not going to give you the stats about his field goal shooting under two minutes with a score that's this close or tell you who has the most buzzer beaters or any of that. Take that for data. I'm just going to show you clutch moments in clutch situations. 1985 against the Blazers. Bird drops 38 jerking? points, including this. Down one with two seconds left. I remember that. Y'all remember. Hell yeah. Best space, 1985 against the Hawks. Bird sets the Celtics scoring record with 60 points with shots like these. They open the right side. Bird the follow, eh? He drills it again. Now have the best shooting I've ever seen. 1986 against the Rockets. Not all of Bird's clutch moments were singular. The bigger the moment, the bigger his performance. In game six of the 1986 NBA Finals, Bird clinches the championship with a triple double in what he calls the best game he ever played. Nineteen eighty seven against the Washington Bullets. Bird hits one shot to tie it before it's waved off because of a timeout. What? It's another shot to tie it up for real. Crowd is standing up. It goes out of Bird. That's legendary, bro. And then in double overtime, down one, he does this. One leg. 
He got him to OT with one leg. For three years, from 1986 to 1988, wow, the three-point contest the knew contest. no other champion but Larry Bird. He's still going to drop one here quickly, 14. This is a tie for the money. Yo! 1987 Eastern Conference Finals, Game 5. Tied at two games apiece against the Bad Boy Pistons, this enormous game would put the winner one game away from the NBA Finals. The Pistons are up one with seconds remaining. The ball goes out of bounds off the Celtics. Isaiah Thomas just needs to inbound the ball to win the game. Bro, the Pistons was nice. <gasps> Larry. That's what it takes. There are truly too many big games and big moments for me to go through without this ending up as a documentary. Right. But that all leads me to this, what I really want to talk about. 1987, NBA Finals, Game 4 against the Lakers. LA is up two games to one, and the Celtics need to win to tie the series and stay alive. Bird hits a three with 12 seconds left to go up by two. Bird, close to three. Okay. Great shot, needed it. Green comes down and gets fouled with eight seconds left. He makes the first, but misses the second. Either. LA ends up with the ball with seven what? seconds left, down one point. Magic hits this, the baby skyhook. Two. two seconds left, down one. I remember. What do you think happens? It's in there. I remember. Oh, I yeah. When I pause the tape. I remember that for sure. Bro. Bird fires it. What do you think happens? Boom. I bet it wasn't that. When I paused the tape and the ball was hanging in the air, you thought it was going in. Bird thought it was going in. Magic thought it was going in. I've seen this game before, and I still think it's going to go in. But it didn't. Pat Riley said it himself. We got lucky. Is that a missed shot in the NBA Finals? I thought it was going to go to another video, my bad. Because after he makes the big plays, has the big games, hits the big shots, Time and time again, you expect him to hit every shot, to win every game. And in those fleeting moments when he doesn't, when he looks like a mere human, when he looks like everyone else who tries to do what he does, you just can't believe it. That's what Larry Bird did. He made the big plays so often, you thought he was going to make them every time. He helped turn basketball into a global phenomenon, paving the way for every Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, or LeBron James who comes through our lives. He played basketball in its purest form and captained a team that is consistently Facts. ranked among the greatest of all time. You said that he well, He has the second bro. highest win percentage in the history of the NBA, behind Magic by less than one half of 1%, about 10 right. games. He was the complete package, a player with no holes in his game whatsoever. They called him Basketball Jesus. He didn't get that name without doing something extraordinary. He saved basketball. And he did it by playing it better than anyone else. Here's Magic at Bird's retirement in 1993. Larry Bird said that there will be another Larry Bird one day. And Larry, there will never, ever, ever be another Larry Bird. To uh, the greatest basketball player ever, but more important, a friend forever. Hey, everybody. Ten. All right, so I ain't going to give you all my scoop yet, okay? Larry Bird for sure fucking up there. He up there, bro. Ah, he up there. But I can't let y'all know the scoop just yet because I personally don't even know the scoop. We got to watch the LeBron one, bro. And I know we got an MJ and a Magic. Let me know in the comments what y'all thought about the video, the reaction, leave some suggestions.
Hit that like button, hit that subscribe, hit that share. You know what it is, OTVL. Out of there.